In a small town in Alaska in 1988, a reporter named Adam is filming with his camera when he spots some strange movement in the iced water. He zooms in to see the phenomenon better and finds himself closer to the Polinia. Later, the Major arrives at the scene to see what's going on. While filming, a whale suddenly emerges from the water. Adam soon discovers that three gray whales are trapped under the ice surface. Although the encounter is initially satisfying, he begins to wonder why the whales would be there and why they haven't continued swimming somewhere else. Adam learns from a villager that the whales are trapped because the seawater freezes when temperatures drop at night. This climatic effect recently occurred and caught the three whales. The villager also explains that within three days, the rest of the water will freeze, leading the whales to their death. After returning to his studio, Adam cannot stop thinking about the trapped whales. He decides to contact New York City to share his report, which is later transmitted on TV. The report highlights the sad event the whales and their family are undergoing. Adam's report attracts a lot of attention from the media, and some people travel to Alaska to help save the whales. However, their efforts may not be enough. The Major explains that nearby whale hunters provide food to the villagers, which complicates the situation. A press conference is held to determine the fate of the whales, but the villagers' support of the hunters makes it difficult to put a stop to the hunting. At the conference, activist Rachel Kramer and the local hunters engage in a heated debate. The hunters argue that their hunting is legal and provides food to the people, while Kramer suggests that an icebreaker can help the whales return to the open sea. Both parties refuse to yield, indicating that a solution may not be reached anytime soon. At the conference, the Major finally decides that the whales will be rescued, much to the annoyance of some villagers. It remains to be seen whether the villagers will rebel or support the Major's decision. The next day, everyone prepares to travel to the location of the trapped whales. Some villagers offer rides to reporters and tourists for money, while the Major and his team use chainsaws to open the Polinia and provide the whales with more space and air. One of the whales shows its face to the Major, who decides to turn the whales into a short-term tourist attraction to make money for the village. This move keeps the whales alive and the villagers' content. Kramer discovers that one of the whales has a fishing net trapped in its tail and jumps into the iced water to free it with her knife. The whale thanks her by swimming gently in front of her. Kramer returns to the surface and explains the fishing net issue to the others. Sadly, they must wait for the icebreaker to arrive and free the whales, who are already tired and haven't eaten for days. To make matters worse, the temperature drops again and the water begins to freeze. The reporters are concerned about the baby whale, whose wound seems to be worsening despite the removal of the fishing net. At night, the people work on the Polinia to keep it as large as possible. However, the pace at which the water freezes is too fast, making their efforts futile. The activists and reporters call for help, and a group of men arrive by helicopter, one of whom has a machine that can prevent the water from freezing. Kramer is skeptical about the machine's effectiveness, but the man who brought it is excited and confident that it will work. Kramer's luck runs out when the generator stops working, preventing the machine from starting. Without delay, he contacts Adam, who advises him to find another machine and warns against turning it on immediately, as it may malfunction again. Kramer and his team hurriedly search for a new machine, finally finding one at a nearby base. With the machine secured, they all head back to the helicopter to fly to the whale's location. The pilot cautions Kramer against starting the engine, as the combustion gases inside the cabin could be fatal for them. Despite the pilot's warning, Kramer insists on flying and suggests keeping the doors open to let fresh air in and remove the combustion gases. Everyone agrees with Kramer's plan but they soon realize the Arctic weather makes it impossible to fly with the doors open. The freezing weather causes the pilot's eyes to freeze, leaving him unable to fly. One of the passengers comes to the pilot's aid, using his warm saliva to melt the ice from the pilot's eyes. With the pilot able to see again, they safely land and head towards the Polinia with the machine. 
Thankfully, this time the machine works flawlessly, extending the whale's life expectancy. As the sun rises, the group makes new holes in the ice surface for the whales to breathe. Two of the whales emerge from the holes, but Kramer realizes that the third one is missing. Unfortunately, after waiting for some time, they conclude that the little whale died due to a big wound and the harsh conditions. Despite the tragedy, everyone remains determined to save the remaining two whales. The Major rallies the village to keep making holes to guide the whales to the shore. However, they soon discover a massive wall of broken ice that blocks the whale's path, making it clear that they need an icebreaker's help. Unfortunately, the icebreaker is trapped on the ice and cannot move. With the icebreaker stuck, Rachel suggests asking the president for help by contacting the Soviet Union for an icebreaker boat. However, the president refuses to provide any aid, citing the Soviet Union as America's worst enemy and not willing to ask for any favors. Kramer uses a tactic to persuade the president to help free the whales by reminding him of the upcoming elections and the potential loss of votes if he doesn't collaborate. The president caves under the pressure and contacts the Soviet Union, causing a frenzy in the media as two enemy countries join forces for the sake of the animals. With the news spreading worldwide, the Alaska village becomes even more motivated to continue their efforts. As they work on the holes, they hear a whistle in the distance and see the Russian icebreaker approaching the ice wall. However, they are unaware of the challenges the boat will face. The mariners realize that the ice wall is too large for the icebreaker to pass through. The captain decides to test the wall by approaching it and hitting it. The wall receives minimal damage, discouraging the villagers and Kramer. The captain reassures everyone and tries again, hitting the wall with all their force, causing it to crack even deeper, but still blocking the animal's path. After a third try, the boat manages to pass over the wall creating a hole for the whales to swim through. As the boat retreats, the villagers rush to the shore to see if the whales are swimming free. Despite waiting, the whales don't move at first, causing some to lose hope. However, they eventually emerge and swim towards the horizon. Everyone celebrates as the whales are finally free, dissolving political and nationalistic differences. They watch the whales swim away, a heartwarming sight after all the effort put into saving them. I hope you're enjoying the content that I'm creating. If you like what you're seeing, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to tell me what I should fix or improve on in the future. Your feedback is greatly appreciated, and it helps me create better content for you. Thanks for your support.